What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Jeremy Wormy, and it can't be another week and and it can't be a day ending in Y, even though it's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Where I don't talk about the Marvels. That's right. I gotta talk about the Marvels. The Marvels is just a wonderful time. And we got we got some interesting developments going on because it kind of sounds like Disney doesn't want to be taking blame for what happened in the Mar with the Marvels. You know, the fact that the Marvels is a definitive flop and is one of the largest flops and actually is the largest flop in MCU history. This is a movie that costs uh, roughly around three hundred million dollars, uh, give or plus or take a million or so. Actually, plus a million or so. I don't. I, oh, costs about three hundred million dollars. It needs to make basically seven hundred million dollars just to break even. Yeah, this isn't a good movie. It probably won't even break a hundred million dollars domestically, and that's a travesty. Well, that's not a travesty. That's just desserts. Now that I think about it, because this is all caused by Marvel adherence to the message at a dogmatic level. <coughs> it is. It is a joke amongst jokes at how bad this movie is going to go, at how awful everything is. And at the end of the day, it is all Marvel's fault. Their forcefulness of the uh, of their identity politics, their demean their demeaning of the fans, their refusal to actually go in the way that fans would like, you know, bring in the uh, X-Men, Fantastic Four, even though it seems like they're bringing in the Fantastic Four now, and that does not look like a good uh, idea. <clears throat> and also they're kind of bringing in the X-Men, both of which are going to be awful, by the way, guys. If you think this was bad, they're just going to continue doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on the awful. I just got to be honest with you guys. But, okay. Instead of actually giving fans what they wanted, they started giving them the all new, all different. That's Black Captain America, Black Falcon, Black Cap, Pat, Black, Black, Black. Uh, that, that that's uh, American Chavez. That's Miss Marvel. That's Hawkeye, female Hawkeye, Kate Bishop Hawkeye. Okay, A and uh, Cassie Lang for A Antifa person we had the announcement of young avengers possibly coming out i honestly don't think that's ever going to see the day but this is what mcu has done hey this is what marvel has done this is what disney has done double down on all this stuff one after another and excuse me that that was an accident oops <clears throat> excuse me sorry i had to do it anyways though it's starting to though seem like Disney doesn't want to take the blame for all this. And I'm not going to fully cut this person out of the blame either. Because she was in the writing room along with everybody else. She was one of the three writers. But it's starting to look like Nia DaCosta has uh, drawn the short straw. Short straw? Yeah, I said that right. Short straw on who they're going to start blaming. Why Marvel's d director Nia DaCosta bailed on the cast and crew screening. Yeah. Supposedly, this was so bad that it got community noted. And we'll, we'll scroll down here. According to Nia DaCosta's representative, DaCosta had not been invited to the cast and crew screening, only when she invited some crew members to her birthday party that she was having that same day did she learn of the screening. Yes, yes. And it, the, the reason why I'm starting to say that this is a kind of getting thrown around as a possibility that Nia DaCosta is being thrown under the bus for all this is we're going to skip over here to uh, the this comic book movie.com but uh, another trade has been accused of publishing a hit piece on director Nia DaCosta and when you go through this this mentions the variety article as well which uh, brought up the fact that she left during post-production if you guys can remember the reports were saying hey she left during post-production and everything like that she wasn't there to actually help out or anything like this the reality is that Nia DaCosta was already signed on to do another movie in, I think, another country along with uh, Tessa Thompson. Shocking how she also got into this movie, but uh, that's besides the point. Um, Nia DaCosta was already signed on to do another movie. They kept pushing that movie back over and over again because this particular movie kept getting pushed back over and over again at least four times from my recollection. And Nia DaCosta said, once post-production begins, I need a dip to go work on my other movie. Now, what I will say is I understand where Nia DaCosta is coming from. And especially in this situation where 
Marvel just cast directors. Legitimately, they just cast Nia DaCosta. They didn't care about Nia DaCosta at, at all, besides the fact that she has a Vagu. She she's a she's black, and that's it. That that's all they cared about. They cared about the fact that she's a black Whammons. That's the only reason they cast her. But I will throw some blame at her feet because she is one of the three writers of this movie. I'm she doesn't get fully out of why this movie bombed, but she is one of the many reasons as to why this movie bombed. Not, but it's not just her fault. That that's what's going on here. But it does seem interesting that you, you got both variety and you now got the Hollywood reporter putting out pieces saying trying to paint her in the most negative light possible. You also got like things like Forbes here coming out to defend her. So we got a weird situation going on in Hollywood where like the the attack dogs of Disney aren't really, you know, are, are doing Disney's bidding, but a lot of the shill sites are defending Nia DaCosta because there's a there's an interesting dynamic when we when we scroll down here. The Marvel's director has been unfairly maligned for months now. Well, she is a writer on it, but let's let's see what they say. Um, the Marvels is a box office bomb, at least on the scale of an MCU feature. No, on scale of literally any feature, any movie you compare to what's going on with the Marvels, it is a bomb. This movie will cost Disney millions upon billions of dollars. It is a bomb of epic proportion, but the lowest opening MCU ever likely headed for the lowest global total and yet it did set one record this is why i'm starting to think like we're seeing a little bit of a pushback between like the shill medias for hollywood and the attack dogs of hollywood you know those those individuals cuz the the hollywood reporter and variety very work closely with like hollywood execs and everything like that especially disney executives uh that variety article that maligned almost all of marvel you don't think kevin foggy had anything to do with that article you're going to be uh I got a bridge to go sell you. But anyways, <clears throat> this is why we're starting to see like pushback on both sides of this because this little area right here. And yet it did set one record, the highest opening for a black female director ever, which itself is a commentary on the state of Hollywood and how and who is allowed to direct big budget block blockbusters. That's right. That's right. This is the one award that all the shills, all the people that are talking about Marvels are constantly saying, hey, it su succeeded here. It succeeded here. The largest uh, opening for a black women's movie ever. Yay. Because this movie did so poorly that that's all they have to go out and champion upon is the fact that, you know, she's a black female instead of you know, pointing out the facts that the movie was just bad. They, they have to hide up behind identity politics, but that's also why we're seeing this interesting back and forth display here and why it's kind of becoming more, more obvious that Disney wants to throw this person under the bus and blame pin all the blame on her. It's not just her fault. This is an issue that's been bubbling up in Marvel for years now across the entirety of the MCU. This has been the culmination of years upon years of BS that people are finally tired upon, tired of, okay? That is the reality of what this is. That is the reality of what happened here. People are sick and tired of the MCU. People are sick and tired of being treated like garbage and not having their source material, their material, their heroes treated with reverence and being forced to accept these bogus heroes as well. And on top of that, awful storylines and awful movies. And it culminated in the Marvels in the most epic and glorious fashion ever. Nia DaCosta is not the only one to blame for all this. And that's what I want to get put through here. And Disney is a long way to go. This still shows how bigoted Disney truly is. Trying to pin all the blame on the black whammon when it's not just her fault, it's everybody's fault in this situation. But let me get you guys' thoughts on all this down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it out, friends, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for every time I put out a new video and go live, guys. And I'll see you all on the next one.
Bye for now. What's going on, guys? Listen, it's Christmas season coming up, and you know what makes great gifts? That's right, Coffee Brand Coffee. Coffee Brand Coffee makes wonderful gifts, and guess what? They don't just have great coffees, teas, and cocos. They also got gear, they got K-Cups, and also they got wonderful gift boxes. Gift boxes that include all sorts of wonderful, great goodies. You got chocolate covered coffee beans, raspberry yogurt pretzel twists, sea salt milk chocolates, caramel. You got chocolate covered coffee beans, peppermint hot cocoa, spicy and sweet treat mixes, kettle corn pop, premium vacuum travel tumblers, and all sorts of wonderful great stuff that you can get at Coffee Brand Coffee. And these make great Christmas gifts. So guys, please check out coffeebrandcoffee.com and use promo code BACKTACO at checkout to get 10% off your purchase. That's coffeebrandcoffee.com, promo code BACKTACO.